Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, there are only a couple of things I think that we need to do, and then we'll be pretty much done with the modeling for Captain Quark here. As we mentioned last video, we could get uh, Captain Quark to smell better. In other words, we could give him a few nostrils here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just select this first layer with the character on it and tab into face mode. And since I've still got the character mirrored, um, I've got an odd problem here. If I select these, and if I tried to hit E to extrude, I just get this, one big, one big nostril. <laughs> and we don't want that. So I'm going to undo that. One way to solve that is to turn off the mirror modifier. But then if I select these two faces and hit E to extrude a nostril there, and then turn the mirror modifier back on, I get this awful pole right here at the tip of the nose, and that's not going to work out either. So I could, um, let's get rid of that. I could add more edges in here to alleviate that, like I could add edges in here, and I could add one along here. But what I'd like to do is try and keep it uh, fairly low poly here. I like the smoothness that we're getting with such few polygons. So the trick is, is how do we create the nostril without creating a terrible point to the nose and adding more edge loops? Uh, I think what we can do is just select this one face and try it from here. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to select that face and I'm going to hit E, and there is the nostril. Now, it looks terrible, I know, but we can maybe move this in a bit and do a little bit of adjusting here so that this will actually move in a bit. Let me frame this up, and we can actually begin to get it to look fairly good while still keeping it relatively low poly here. Now I'm going to select that one face there and go to the side view and orthographic. And now I can just hit E and maybe just move that straight up like that. So we've got the hole there for the nostril. Let me, I'm going to extrude one more time just to bring that up a little bit. Now we need to just do the work to get it to look okay. And it's actually not too bad so far, but I think we can do a little bit better. So I'll just take this edge and move it in a hair. I don't want it to collapse in because I have clipping on in the mirror modifier here. And so if I get it too close, it clips in like that. I can reduce the merge limit here, but I think this is okay. I think we'll be able to do this. And then I'll just begin taking the points around here and adjusting them to get the shape that we want. In addition, I think I'll take this point and move it in just a bit. Maybe move these down a bit. And maybe bring this point in some too, so we begin to get that little indentation in the center of the upper lip here, see if we can hint at that structure. It may take a little bit more adjusting, but I think it'll work. Now let me bring back the mask, and we'll probably have to do a little bit of adjusting for the mask, won't we? Once again, no good deed goes unpunished here. So I'm going to turn off the limit selection here and just do a little pulling of these points. And there we go. So we've got the beginnings of that. Now I can maybe turn up the subdivision surface just to see how this is going to look. It's going to clean up a little bit there. So I think this will work. I'm going to have to do a little bit more point pulling, but I think we'll be able to get that to work out pretty well. All right. So the next thing I'd like to do is that crazy little thing on the top of his head. I'm going to go to a clean layer here and go to the front view. This thing here, 
whatever this thing is supposed to be. I've got an image of it from the movie's website. Let me go to that. Here we go. So here it is. This is the, um, so this is him here. And this is the little thing on his head. So it looks like these two things are about the same size. We've got the base piece and the little ball on the top. So let's work on that. I'll turn these layers back on and what I might do is bring the 3D cursor right into here so that when I create an object it'll come into that point. Let me open up the properties panel and move the 3D cursor exactly into the center for the X, zero that out and exactly into the center for the Y, and zero that out. Now when I create something it'll pop into the center of the grid at this point. So let's uh, create a cylinder. And I don't need 32 sides, have out 12. And I'll go ahead and use no cap fill here. I don't want anything on the top or the bottom. So it's just an empty cylinder. And I'll scale it in and try and get it to size here. I'll hit the Z key. And let's see if we can do this. I'm going to scale it in the Z, and then I want to scale it in the X and the Y, but not the Z. So I'll hit S and Shift Z, and then scale that out a bit. Let's scale it in so it tilts in just a bit. We can probably scale this bottom edge out a bit. And I'll hit E and scale in. And do the same again, and one more time, E, and I'll just press Alt-M and merge at the center. So that closes that off. And then let's add an edge loop here. And we're probably going to need one down here as well. Let's see, because I want to kind of round off the bottom. I see in this image that you can see this bottom has a little bit of a, a rounded edge to it. So I kind of want to do that. So I think if I do this, it'll help with that. So let's go ahead and add the subdivision surface modifier. And let's take a look at it. Smooth it over here under shading. And there we go. I might want to move this up just a little bit with Control E and Edge Slide to tighten that up a bit. And there we go. For one of these things, I'll just take the cursor here and move it up in the Z. Just click and drag in the Z and move that up to say here. And I'll create another cylinder. This time I will go ahead and give it a triangle fan cap fill. And scale it down and get it to size. And I'll duplicate it and move it up here just to get a sense of it. And now I'm going to bring that cursor up to the little circle up here. Create a UV sphere. And scale that down. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And smooth it. Okay. So I'd like to add a subdivision surface modifier to this one. And one way to do that without having to add it over here in the menu time and time again is to select it, shift select an object that already has the modifiers you want, and then link those objects by pressing Control L and then choose Modifiers. And that will add the modifier to that one as well. And then I can come over here and smooth it. So that's not quite what it looks like, although pretty close actually, now that I look at it. Let's see if it helps at all to add an edge loop in here. Yeah, something like that, okay. And it looks like we can just do the same thing here, so I'll just delete this and then duplicate it and move it up. 
I've got mine drawn as two different sizes here, but actually it looks like in the image they're pretty much the same size. So I'll leave it like that. And now we need to create that cylinder. So once again, I'll just drag that cursor down to kind of the center of where that cylinder is going to be. Go to Create, Cylinder, and I don't think I need a cap fill for this, so I'll change it from Triangle Fan to Nothing. And let's scale it down and get it to size. Now in the image, it looks like there's kind of, it's kind of wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So first of all, I'll just go into vertex mode and select these points up here. And just scale those down a bit, like that. And what I could do is insert another edge loop up here, like this, and then just drag it down. And there we go. We've got that kind of tapered look there now. But we're also going to need more edge loops in this. Because if it's going to be animated and it's going to uh, flop around as he moves, we'll need a few edges in there for it to bend. So we'll need that. And once again, I can shift select one of these objects that already has a modifier on it. Control L and modifiers. And then I can come back over to the tools and smooth it. All right. So there we go. We've got uh, Captain Quark with his strange little doohickey up on his head there. And he smells a little better now. The last thing I want to try is I'd like to try and add a flap to one of these pouches. I know I said I might wait till the texturing phase, but I had an idea here that I just wanted to try. Um, I'm going to tab into edit mode here and go to edge mode and I think what I want to do, let me turn off the subdivision surface and I'm going to take these edges and move them in a little bit with edge slide like this. And then I'm going to add an edge loop about where the flap would be. And then I'm going to take these two edges and I'm going to bring them down with edge slide like this. So now I'm kind of getting the basic shape of one of those packet flaps. So now what I want to do is select these faces here like this. Let me hit the Z key and make sure I haven't chosen anything else. Nope. All right. And then I'm going to extrude with the E key. And instead of scaling out, I'm going to use this Shrink Fatten tool, which is Alt-S. And just drag the mouse a bit so it pulls it out some. And there we have the beginnings of that flap on the pouch. Now the problem is, is if we turn on the subsurface modifier, it collapses, right? So we don't want to do that quite yet. What I'm going to do is select this edge. I'll press Alt and click and then Alt Shift and click this, these two edges. And I'm going to make these sharp by going to Control E, the edges menu and choosing Make Sharp. And what that does is it gives us a little bit of definition there, not a lot. But if we add a couple of edge loops in here, like maybe two, Now if we turn on the subdivision surface modifier, we can see we've got kind of a flap there, but it's a little too rounded. So what I'm going to do is, let me turn this off, I'm going to select this edge and this edge, and this edge and this edge, and make these sharp, Control E, make sharp. And then I'm going to insert two edges right in here. Let's see how this works this. Now if we turn on the subdivision surface modifier, we get a little bit more of a flap on that packet. Now we could do things like moving this edge over just a bit. See how we can sharpen that up just a little bit here and edge slide. 
sharpen that up just a bit. Yeah, so I think I think that's all we need for that. And I didn't have to add a huge amount of geometry to that. So I'll go ahead and go through and do that to the other pouches. I may just delete these and duplicate these and move them around. But I think that pretty much finishes up the modeling for Captain Quark here. In the next series of videos, we'll begin UV mapping the character. And then after that, we'll begin adding materials and textures. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you soon. Blender fans assemble. It's time to create Captain America's motorcycle using hard surface modeling techniques in Blender. In this online course, you'll learn the tools and processes of modeling a complex, realistic vehicle. We'll use reference images taken of the motorcycle from the first Captain America movie on display at the Harley Davidson Museum. We'll build the bike up from the frame, assembling each piece using different Blender tools along the way. And we'll even go over setting up materials and lighting for a final render. This course is available at Blender101.com where you'll also get my Blender Scene Creation course, the course that takes you through the entire process of creating an animated scene in Blender from the first polygon to the final rendered movie. And if you're just starting out with Blender, you'll also get the course Blender 101 Introduction to 3D Modeling, an in-depth course that covers the fundamentals of modeling in Blender. And at Blender101.com, you get new courses and projects every month. So join me as we create Captain America's motorcycle at Blender101.com. It's Blender for everyone.